So if you're somebody who's struggling to develop the upper pec fibers using maybe incline bench presses or incline dumbbell presses, it could be because you're positioning your pelvis and spine in the wrong position during the bench press. Now, to back up, I wanna first tell you how the muscle fibers of the chest connect and insert and attach to the body so that we can understand the angles better to specifically target either the middle, upper, or lower pec. Now, the pec muscle itself attaches right through here. The big pec muscle, the pectoralis major, attaches from here, nice small attachment area, and it runs all the way across the sternum, so all the way from here, the top of the clavicle, down to the sternum, so it kind of fans in this motion which is why a lot of times when we do our pressing, right, we're getting that deep stretch of the muscle fibers all the way through here. When we wanna go incline, we'll change our positioning of our chest through an angle on the bench to hopefully hit a lot of the upper pec and get through here. Now what I'm finding when I'm working with people who come to me or asking for upper pec isolation exercises is I give them incline bench, whether that's a barbell or a dumbbell, but they're still lacking the ability to really isolate those upper pec fibers. So I'm going to show you two things that I will do with my movements here to help me isolate the pec fibers better and to really feel them engage to a next level all by simply repositioning my pelvis uh, bench with an assistance of a box. So let's jump in. So everyone I'm sure at this point is familiar with the incline bench. Now, the first thing we can do with an incline bench before we even adjust the angles to really hone in on the angles that best fit our shoulder and chest structure, we first wanna make sure that we're positioning ourselves on the bench to isolate the pec fibers. Now, it's important to remember when we're doing any type of movement, we typically have you know, two kind of goals for that movement. The first is movement efficiency. Can I move the weight from point A to point B, the most efficient possible way. And that typically comes out when we're trying to lift as much weight, maybe it's a sport in powerlifting or Olympic weightlifting, where we're trying to position ourselves and our body and our muscles and our joints so that they can work in unison all together to move from A to B with the ultimate goal of increasing how much weight we can lift. But when we're trying to gain muscle mass and muscle fiber, this doesn't mean that we uh, don't have to lift heavy. We still want to challenge the muscle with load, but we really want to think about putting the muscle at a disadvantage by changing the joint angles, changing the positioning so that the muscle itself has to work harder at a given load and be less efficient moving the load so that it has to overcome the stimulus and also grow the muscle. So when we're doing an incline bench or a uh, uh, even a flat bench, we want to really pay attention to a couple things. So most of the time people lay back, right? They get a nice big arch in their back. Now, this isn't wrong. This is just a different way of doing it. I would want to get a big arch in my back, really open up and expand my rib cage if I was trying to, say, press as much as I could, right? If I was trapped under a car, I would 100% take this wide stance, use my legs, use my hips, and I'd drive the weight off me but it might not actually be the best way to fully isolate just the upper pec fibers. So what I like to do with this is I'll take a box because the whole idea of the box is I wanna take my pelvis and I wanna take that big arch out of it. I wanna pull my hip underneath me and just by doing that, I start to feel here because on a flat bench, right, my chest is up and I'm flat and I'm opening up. Well, if I don't have this and I'm on an incline and I just slide down and I make it here, all I'm really doing is just taking my incline bench and turning it into less of an incline bench. Even though I didn't adjust this angle, I'm just adjusting my spine to get like this. And that, again, is not what we're trying to do when we're trying to build the upper pec. So, I like to take this box here, I will put my feet up on the box here, and really the feet here, it allows me to just drive down to the box. I want to think about my belt buckle kind of pulling up here so my back is not arched. And from this position, now I can do my press. And what's happening is I'm pulling the rib cage down, flattening out the spine, but I'm placing a huge stretch on the upper pec fibers versus this, where now I'm 
turning into a more advantageous position for me to press more weight, but it might not actually be truly isolating up through here. So if you're having trouble with that, I would first start with just repositioning your pelvis, pulling the hips up. You could keep the hips down on the floor, but sometimes it's easy to slide off, so I like kind of having that there. And then when we're coming down, we're there. As we press out, you just want to make sure you're not driving up and using that lower back to change your angle. So deep stretch, pressing, whether it's a barbell or a fly, we want to really keep that rib cage pulled down. You'll feel through here, and that should help you with that upper pec. The next thing we're going to look at here is going to be changing the angle of the bench. Now, here, this is probably a 30 degree angle. I could go higher up on a 45. I could go lower. Some benches can take the lower down to like a 15% kind of uh, incline. So you can play around with that. And now the, the higher the incline, the more you're going to start to work up to until you get all the way up here, which would be your vertical overhead press, which would be you know front delt, delt, and a little bit up a pec. So depending on your flexibility, your mobility, your shoulder range of motion. You can really play around with that to see where you feel that, that stretch. I recommend kind of somewhere in the middle. I'll either take like a 15 or a 30 degree. That way I'm not getting too much shoulder in the movement. So I'm going to show you two exercises, the incline fly and the incline press. We're going to use dumbbells for this, but you could also use this in a machine or you could do it on barbells. The setup is going to be the same with the hip positioning and the focus. It's just different tools. But I'm going to show you what those look like. I'm going to first start it off with the good positioning where you'll see the difference in my pelvis. And then I'm going to go back to kind of what most people do, which is they let that pelvis go. And again, to reiterate, by letting that arch happen, it's not wrong. It's not the wrong way to lift. It's just if you're having issues isolating that upper pec fiber, you might want to chill that arch out, bring it more into neutral to force that range of motion versus here. So let's get into it. So both of those variations will hit the upper pec fiber. I've actually felt both of them, whether I have my feet up or not. But the biggest thing there is that if you're having issues locking in that incline press and really feeling the upper pec fibers, maybe take a second, put your feet up, chill the rib cage down to the body, get that big stretch, really work just those upper fibers to start. And then you can obviously put the feet back down and you can increase the loading because you will be able to do a little more weight with the feet down. But just understand, yes, you're using more weight, probably gonna have some more stress in the muscle, or you can just isolate the muscle a little better, not have to go up in as much weight, take some more pressure off the shoulder, more pressure off the lower back. So that right there is your press. Same idea with the fly. When we do the fly here, again, we wanna think about chilling that lower back out opening up and keeping the hands kind of up in line with the shoulders. We don't want to be back here with them. And then we're coming up. We don't want to be ending out here. Again, we're trying to hit that upper pec. We want to have that line right over top. So let's show you here. Feet are up. I'm opening up soft bend. Big wide stretch. I can also keep my feet down, arch my back. And again, this is not to say the feet down on the ground is not the right way. It might even be a great way for you to feel your upper pec, but I challenge you to keep your feet up, tuck that pelvis down, take the arch away, and see if you can get more upper pec development or even just start to activate those fibers and then go back to your normal pressing. And there you have it. My two main takeaway tips here, again, 
fixing the pelvis, making sure that we're pulling that rib cage down and in to really increase that range of motion on the upper pec. And then also thinking about changing your angle positioning. But first, again, focus on that pelvis positioning. Make sure we're not too arched. Turn those upper pec fibers on. Find the right angle that works best for you. And then once you start to really isolate and key in on those muscle fibers, if you want to put your feet back down on the ground for some more stability, that's great. But just understand if you're having issues building your upper pec, adding more weight to the bar on top of maybe not the best form or technique, not even with just your pressing, but maybe your joint angles in your hip and in your pelvis, could be the reason why you aren't feeling it. I really like doing these exercises for a lot of the dumbbell type movements, as well as like the flies. Um, you can also use it for machines or barbells. So if you guys found this video helpful, comment below, let me know what other videos like this you'd want to see, whether it's other chest exercises, glute exercises, or just general muscular development, and hit that subscribe button for more. Thanks.